For years, scientists have said our system to regulate toxic chemicals is not working. We wanted to know why. The longer that there is delay, the more profit that uh, companies can make from selling uh, toxic chemicals. We have a very strong ideology in our country that is against regulation. David Rosner and Gerald Markowitz are researchers who have written more than eight books, including Deceit and Denial and Lead Wars, The Politics of Science and the Fate of America's Children. It took Congress more than 30 years to change the Toxic Substances Control Act. Why did it take so long? Industry engages in a great effort to create doubt about the science, and by creating doubt, people are uncertain, and so they're reluctant to demand action uh, from Congress. And we have this weird system in the United States that we presume a chemical to be safe unless it is absolutely proven to be dangerous. I mean, we all remember the history of tobacco. We understand that's fairly well known, where industry just said, prove to us this causes cancer. It's very difficult when you're dealing with products that take 20, 30, 40 years to show their effects. One of the most eye-opening moments for me in your book, Lead Wars, was when you talked about how manufacturers blame parents and children for getting lead poisoning. They actually tried to deny the danger by putting out ads that said, lead is good for your health. They literally say this. And they start doing things like producing little puppets, Leslie, uh, just like you, that go about uh, advertising to children uh, how good lead is. They'd even blame puppets if they could. As you studied the history of lead poisoning, what did you find the most alarming? In 1904, you had the first article that talked about uh, children dying of uh, lead poisoning. That the World War I, you had a variety of European countries banning lead in interior paints. The United States uh, did not uh, adopt those kinds of regulations. And in fact, in the 1920s, we actually added lead to gasoline. Instead of taking it out of something, we added it to gasoline. The U.S. finally started to get lead out of paint and gasoline in the late 1970s. The benefits, scientists say, were almost immediate. What we saw was a tremendous uh, decline in the average blood lead levels of children. Although, in the case of lead in paint, it remains in people's homes, and children continue to be lead poisoned. Even at low levels, what was exposed is that children continue to be damaged. Not of damage that is completely obvious. They're not dying, they're not convulsing, they're not going into comas like they used to go into, but now we're finding that they have all sorts of problems that basically set them back in life. Put simply, these scientists say, we need to stop putting our heads in the sand. The new bill is an example of the kind of compromise that is constantly being made. I don't want to necessarily it, demean it. I will. Okay. Uh, it will take a hundred years for us to be able to uh, test all the chemicals that need to be tested to assure the safety of the products that we're using every day under this new bill. Up next, why neurotoxins may be behind the dumbing down of America, a special report from Dan Rathernot.